Welcome to the Eastside Girl Chronicles. We got some stuff on the docket today for the Chronicles. It's, it's lit, okay? Yes. You go, you go, you go, you go. Okay. So I mentioned earlier um, in the new music update that Bruno Mars, Anderson Pack, they actually collaborated and made it made a new uh, collaboration called Pretty God, I don't forget Satin Soul, something like that. Either way. Um, their new song "Leave the Door Open" is I'm talking about. It's giving you all of the R&B, it's sexy. soul jams from like the 70s, mm-hmm. 80s. You know, good, 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 good old loving R&B. And it's no secret that Bruno Mars is musically inspired by Morris Day in the Time, Prince, James Brown. You know, Michael Jackson. He incorporates all of these greats into his performances and his music. Right. Mm-hmm. We know Bruno Mars is brown, but he's not black. And he's also not white. He's Pacific Islander. Mm -hmm. And I believe that Anderson Pack is also something ambiguous like that, too. Mm -hmm. So people have been going in on my good brother Bruno Mars on Twitter because they're they're calling him a culture vulture and saying that, you know, that he negatively, you know, culturally appropriates from black culture. And that's not nobody but Generation Z who don't know shit. Again, they don't know. And so... No First, offense. every single time that Bruno Mars <laughs> does an interview, he pays homage to the greats that I just mentioned and other people all the time. What people don't know is Bruno Mars comes from a very musical background, and his father actually played background for some of these artists that are mm-hmm. influenced by, you know, that he's influenced by. Uh, he plays like literally every instrument possible. So he, it, the soul thing is is embedded in, in him. him. Yeah. But it just brought the conversation about cultural appropriation. And how black people police everything that that we put our own hot sauce on. So almost like to an exclusive point where unless you're black, you can't do this. Mm -hmm. And is that really fair? We're so judgmental of everybody and everything. But black people are also guilty of culturally appropriating things as well. Like? Okay, let me me speak here. So (laughs) black culture, African-Americans culture is a culture that was created because we were literally ripped and removed from our own, right? Right. So black people, African Americans, culturally appropriate from the Caribbean culture mm-hmm. and from the African cultures all the time. Mm-hmm. Waist beads, Fulani braids, hell, eating uh, eating plantain. Did I say it right? You said it how they say it, so that's fine. Okay. <laughs> Just not they. <laughs> right. Not they. You know, not and, and, and rice and peas. I mean, even mm-hmm. even African Americans getting down with the with the you know, with the reggaeton and the and the other type of music that I don't know. God damn. I, <laughs> I mean, but I just feel like people just need to just not be so judgmental because when we want to break barriers into different industries, for example, um, K. Michelle was trying to get into country, country music, and we started country music, and we did but start I, country music. I think however, the, the issue with it is it's one thing for it to be cultural ap- appropriation, but it's another thing to be showing appreciation mm. for something, mm. yes. and when you don't give that acknowledgement for where your inspiration came from, and you just bring this to light or bring this to the table as if it was yours, right. like you created it, that's where the problem in lies. But like Brittany said. I don't think that he deserves that type of backlash because he shows appreciation for where his inspiration comes from. In every right, way. Right. In right. every way. Just like how K- uh, Kim Kim Kardashian rocking cornrows. Mm-hmm. And she, you know, they're saying it's the new style, but she could have definitely said she was inspired from but that was one some of her bullshit black friends. Because everybody was, it, at one point, people was calling it the Kim Kardashian braids. No, I ma'am. I hated them calling it that. No, ma'am. Yeah. But you know what? Beyonce. Everybody was calling the the lemonade, lemonade braids, braids. <laughs> lemonade braids, right? But that that those were a, um, a variant of the Fulani braids from mm-hmm. the Fulani African tribe. People didn't know about that until B talking about hold up, they don't love you like I love you. Mm-hmm. You know, they they didn't know that until she put it she out put there. Them on, yeah, I really think the the bottom the bottom underlining issue is black people and and really black is not even a culture uh, to be honest. If we really want to get into history, but we really, and me included, we need to really learn and understand where we come from and, and really dive deep into our history. And our history is way more further than grandma and great-grandma and granddaddy and great-granddaddy. Like, we really need to dive deep into Absolutely. our roots and understand who we are and where we came from and mm-hmm. understand how things really came about of Y'all tap if y'all ain't never heard of these people. Tap into the Moors. R- read about. I just spoke spoke to my students about the Moors, and these kids didn't even know. Literally, they told me at the last day of Black History Month, they said because I gave them something new that that we don't talk about in the mm-hmm. textbook, and they literally told asked me like, Miss Hill, how come this stuff isn't in the history books? The Black Moors ruled Spain for seven hundred years. years. The Black Moors are responsible for civilizing Europeans. Like literally, mm-hmm. bathing came from the Black Moors. Mm-hmm. 
And they called Africans barbaric. And that shit is nowhere in the McGraw-Hill textbook. Who's or Pearson. Who is behind McGraw Hill at this point? I'm trying to get a job with where Pearson. Where is the hey. class action lawsuit? <laughs> okay. When is it coming? But but that's the thing. Because that is defamation of character. It's, I'm so tired. No, it really <laughs> is. If we if we want to come down to it, like, like black folks got a whole lot of shit to sit on because we've been defamed forever. Mm-hmm. And black history doesn't start with that transatlantic slave trade. Yes. Right. When we say that we are <laughs> kings and queens, we really mean that. Like, we really come from kings and queens. And conquerors and rulers and mathematicians yes. and, and astrologists and you know literally the, the start of civilization but they take that shit and they run with it and you know history is is told from the victor and never yes the opposite side so so when people do decide to tap into their culture or tap into different cultures that they appreciate we need as black people to allow people to do that yeah just don't be a hater. Don't say they trying to be like this. And I know I'm guilty of people trying to get in, get down with the West Indian culture. I love However, that culture. However, so you know, allow people to add places to their palate and, you know, be diverse and culturally, you know, knowledgeable. I couldn't have said it better myself, darling. <laughs> All right. So. Oh, this is juicy now. Um, yeah, it ain't juicy. Yes, Y'all ain't it gonna is. Do this. So Come my on. question is, because I've had a lot of fallouts with friendships and other different kind of relationships. Mm -hmm. And my question to you guys is about closure. Is closure necessary? Um, Yes or no? Yes. And I feel that uh, closure, excuse me, I'm still talking about culture. Closure is necessary because I feel like we do not recognize when we move from one situation, relationship, situationship, dealing with whatever it was, when you move from one situation to the next and you did not take care of your business over here before you walked into this situation, mm. it creates an internal issue. Right. So now, like Erica Badu, like literally like that shit really went over my head for so many years. Bag, until bag, I got right? yeah. Yeah. Like I did not really realize what you the hell miss that your was. Bus. Yeah. Literally Carrying all them bags like that. Right. So you, you have miss to some blessings. You have to take care of your mess. You gotta clear out all your bags. And it's it's just healthy, like, and yes. I feel like when people talk about closure because it's been done uh, wrong for you know so many years, I think that people think of it in a negative way, and they're like, oh, why, why do you need to have closure with that person? Uh, because you you don't with that person. Why you need to speak to that person? Da 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 da. But it's just more so like, let me handle this so that I could be my best self with you. And so that it won't interfere what we got going yes. on. Because if you leave a door open, even if you walk away. The door is still open. open. Yes. You know what I'm saying? If, yes. some, if if you smell something in the other room, eventually that... that You're going to go walk into the other room and try to see if you can what get it a piece. Is. Or, you, or it's going to weasel its way, you know, that smell going to travel. Even within friendships, you probably would need some closure as well. Mm-hmm. And I know that when we had that little situation with old girl, she was trying to make it seem like this is closure for me. But it was really, I wasn't coming into the situation as far as I'm closure. Yeah. It was just coming into the situation as far as understanding the bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I guess closure, in a sense, is it's more understanding. so understanding. Mm-hmm. But it just depends on which way you go after you get it. Mm-hmm. Do you get closure and still walk back into that same door? Or do you get closure, learn from it, and go another, go in another direction? Mm. So closure can be good and it can be bad. Have you guys ever been in a situation where closure reopens doors? Um, you know what? I don't think that I, I can say that those instances closure was never actually um, received. Like y'all, kn- I don't know if you know this is on the Trigger album, the YAS "You Ain't Shit" song. Mm-mm. <laughs> okay, damn. That would have been such a. We should put that as an instrumental under uh, under this though. It's, it's a good one. Okay. But basically, sometimes we like. I'm guilty of walking into a situation saying, you know what, this is the last time. This is my closure. Knowing good and well, I really, I really didn't have truthful intentions of closing the door. Right. You know. But when, but when you done and you know you done and you good and mm-hmm. fed up, it ain't nothing like sealing a deal and sealing that door shut. Yeah. 
But how do you do it? Like, there's different ways of closure. Is closure required face-to-face? Is closure... Sometimes closure doesn't even require you communicating with the other person. Because what is closure for? Who is it for? Is it for them or is it for you? It's for you. I think it's for both. I think it's for either... I guess it depends on what type of closure you're looking for. So if you're looking for friendship closure, it might be for you. It might be for both, just to to end the situation if you're in talking about you know relationship Mm -hmm. closure it might be for both or it might be for you to to get with it most times when it comes to relationships it's really for the person who's looking for it who's looking for the understanding who's looking for the what happened who's looking for the why is this why did this happen it's really for that because you know most times in relationships one person is moved on and the other person is still stuck in those feelings as far as okay damn what if this could have happened? What if that could have happened? And then they have to go back and revisit that person or, you know, hash it out as, you know, hey, what happened? What is this? What is that? And that person just got to be like, so most times it's like, hey, it's just over. But see, I feel like I want, I I feel like a lot of times as women, we're the ones that's reaching out and searching Seeking for the closure. The closure. Yeah. But I feel like men and women should both be participating in that because I think, and and I know this. Uh, some men probably listen to this and be like, "Oh, that's not true." Da, da, da. But I really feel like the what a man's sense of closure is like. Hey, let's talk about this, and then we end up talking, and we end up having sex. And <laughs> I feel like that that's their way of like, let me hit it one more time and before she closed the door. Yeah, nah. that's that's closure. No, I can't but tell you how many times that has happened in my life? It, yes, and that's what I was finna- or that's what Real I was talk. thinking about <laughs> when you was talking, like in my younger or in my earlier 20s before you was out the streets before you <laughs> was out the streets last week but <laughs> <laughs> no but for real like it's been i'll say more so college let me say that like mm-hmm. i feel like that dating i was dating more passively mm. and i did talk about this in an earlier episode but i've allowed things to happen that i didn't necessarily want same and i may i may have come into a situation where i was looking for a different outcome and it didn't go that way and i never spoke on it i I never said anything about it i just kind of like went on about my way but now that i'm getting into my later 20s and approaching my 30s and now i'm just like i really want to be more serious and and i'm trying to intentional and i'm trying to break bad habits i'm sitting here like last year i really realized like damn girl like you really have some things that you have to take care of Mm -hmm. and coincidentally this was really just God's doing, but some people came into my life that I had dealings with ex boyfriends that were like serious situations. Um, and one of those ex boyfriends, me and him are really good friends. That was my very first boyfriend from high school, but I was able to cut a lot of things off. And in my thinking, you know, maybe this could have just be, been me manifesting, but in my thinking, I'm just like, dang, I'm having all this closure. Maybe my husband is good. <laughs> Ew, <laughs> you're for it because I yeah. totally feel like that's the case. It could <laughs> be. Yeah. It, could, yes. it definitely Shout could out be. To the Virgos, okay? Because the, yes, yes. Oh, oh. okay. Oh, the, you see, every time it's crying on me. <laughs> wait till we. I can't wait till we. <laughs> you know what? You know what? It's her this week, it not is me. Her. And I just, I'm just so taken back. I don't even know what to say. I'm how here to for feel. it. Isha's like, and I'm like, yeah. Yes. I am just. Because I'm over here like big mama, big sister, yes, looking yes. at Omari like, girl. Nah, but you know, do your thing, be, gr- be safe, be, be grown, and, be know, safe. Do what you got to do. Absolutely. The but more about, so, oh, go ahead, I'm go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. You go, go, go. What I was going to say was the thing about closure. Well, I guess in my experience, the times um, the times where I was seeking closure, mm-hmm. um, it, was, it was because I needed understanding. Mm-hmm. Right. But as the adult, the 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 grown up Britney or the the mature Britney, I view closure differently. Mm. Instead of seeking understanding, my closure is this is it. Yes. This is not for understanding. This is for the record. Yes. This is not I'm asking you for something. No, no, no. I don't give I don't give a damn about what you can offer me because mm-hmm. at this point there's nothing that, that needs to be offered. This is the official, this is why we're not Yes. We ain't going back, and this is the official boundary that's being set, and I dare you to cross it. Yes, because mm. we ain't going back. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yes. And if you've ever been on the mm. receiving side of Brittany giving the closure, you know then that's really how it is. Mm. Don't listen. Sometimes <laughs> ghosting is closure. Ghosting know? is not closure. Ghosting is ghosting, ghosting is, not is closure. closure so when what you need your mental it. health. I was ghosted. I was ghosted before, and I really didn't appreciate that. <laughs> Because, Closures for two different people. But nah, I did not appreciate that. And if you listening, 
I ain't appreciate that. <laughs> Not if you I was ghosted. Out. I was ghosted before. I've been ghosted like, before, too. Oh, my God. We I just had such a great too. time. But that's a two-way street. I've been ghosted, and I've uh-huh. ghosted. I've definitely ghosted, and I've definitely been ghosted. I think that's a, the, the, the circle street. of life. I don't ghost. I Now I feel like, and, and this is, again, this is a different version of myself, so... I, I hope nobody trying to ghost me now. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to come hunt you Picture down. Picture how you would feel if you was ghosted <laughs> at this day and age. I would probably. It's, it does not feel good. Yeah. Exactly. So but. Got time. I but mean, it's all right. when you're the one that's doing the ghosting, like I said, it's for your, it, me, let me speak for me. It's for my mental health. Yeah. I'm walking away because. I'm done. I'm done. And <laughs> I feel like, obviously, for me to feel like I'm ghosting you, obviously, the situation was not worthy of us having a conversation. Right. Well, I hope that's not what the person thought would they ghosted me because we had such a great time <laughs> ne- you never know what's on the other side though I but you know what at, the, at one point that person did reach out and i did ghost them because i didn't respond it was a more so of a hey i'm in your city type of thing but you know it's a different time different situation different thing going on i can't even go back that way hello so, growth eyes married now <laughs> I am not married. I am not married. But what I don't need is nobody popping up at the altar like, uh uh-uh, uh. You don't you? want no Dwayne Wade? Please, baby, please. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I don't put in, I don't put in too much work to get here. <laughs> and this is where I want to be. You don't put in decades where... at this point. Hold on, wait. Because y'all, like, 10 years. It is. It's, it's, it's been a while. We ain't going to put no number on it. Let's just say the, the age that the boys is, is here. So let's just say seven years. Okay. Because okay. they're going to be seven this year. But that's still a long ass goddamn time. Yes, it that's is. very true. Um, Because high school, who's counting high school? For real. I right. ain't counting nothing out of 2020. Honestly, I told y'all. I'm a whole Please. virgin. What are you saying? T- me too, girl. Hello. You ain't no virgin the way you've been grinding on this day. Yeah, I did dance. just recently lose my virginity. Anywho, let's go I'm straight. So oh, my <laughs> gosh. We got it. Reverend Bachelorette. We're ready for the word. We cannot talk about sex. (laughs) We cannot talk about sex before I give y'all the word. Yes, we can, because God created it and He wanted us to have it.